Hello and welcome back to the Alchemical Arts. Today I'm back again with more Cobalt. It seems to be that I'm on a little bit of a Cobalt obsession at the moment. Um, mostly because I want to round out the Cobalt series so I can move into some other things potentially like Cadmiums because Cadmiums are fun. But let's focus on the matter at hand which today we are going to be looking at a very different kind of cobalt, and that is cobalt yellow, or as it's known as aurelin, or aurel. I find that word very hard to say. But it also has the other pseudonym of Indian yellow because it's very similar to the now obsolete pigment that was known as Indian yellow. This will be, I think, only the second time I've attempted to synthesize this, and the first one I yielded some... This was the first little te test sample that I yielded from when I was sort of figuring out if I could even do this, and it's kind of... Hmm, it's hard to say. This yellow seems to change color quite drastically under different lights, um, but it seems to me as this sort of semi-mustardy bright kind of yellow, which has some, I think, some desirable characteristics. I've never painted with a cobalt yellow before, uh, and I actually only really realized that it existed kind of recently through some research. The other problem I faced too is the literature on the subject was kind of fairly scant, and so I'm kind of roughly kind of making up my process here as we go, or at least just blind experimenting with some theoretical background. So essentially what we have here, what what cobalt yellow is, is it's a um, it's a nitrite compound. So it's like a cobalt potassium nitrite or a cobalt sodium potassium nitrite. Uh, so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to be combining nitrite and nitrate compounds together in order to try and force the precipitation of this salt or compound. So what we have here in these little Erlamina flasks is two grams of cobalt nitrate which I made a couple of days ago from simply acidifying some cobalt carbonate with the nitric acid and then boiling it down and collecting the residual salt. And then over here we have a potassium nitrite solution, uh, crystals. So we have three grams of potassium nitrite because I've read that you want the potassium nitrite to be in, in excess. The other key component to this little synthesis that's going, on, going to happen here is um, the cobalt nitrate solution needs to be acidified. So to do that we have here some concentrated acetic acid or glacial acetic acid which is like essentially a pure acetic acid. So if your regular vinegar is quite low in acetic acid, so I can't remember the percentage but it would be less than 10%. This is close to like 99% acetic acid, I believe. So it's a strong vinegar. Even just this small amount in here, I can get wafts of a vinegar smell. And anyway, so essentially what we're gonna do is we acidify our cobalt nitrate solution, and then we add it to a strong concentrated solution of potassium nitrite. The only difference between the two samples that I'm going to be doing is in this one here I've added a one gram of sodium chloride, so just regular table salt, in an attempt to see whether or not you can create a potassium sodium cobalt nitrite complex and see if that has any effect upon the color as it comes out. So all I'm doing to the side here is I'm heating up some water because we want to do this reaction hot and as concentrated as possible and that way we will I think produce the best possible yellow that we can or at least the strongest 
So let's begin by dissolving our cobalt solutions. So we'll just grab our little beaker here. And we'll just add that into our first solution there. And we'll do the same for the other one. And we shall just give these a little bit of a swirl and see if we can get all the salt to dissolve. So it turns out that there was a little bit of filter paper stuck on my cobalt nitrate from when I made it just the other day. And so now my solution is filled with filter paper, which is just great. So I'll just do a very quick filtration of that through a funnel here with some cotton wool. It's always good to work with as clean and as pure as materials as possible because the more impurities you have in things, the more likely you'll negatively impact the, the shade of the color you're trying to produce. So now we need to acidify our cobalt solutions. So to that I'm going to add about one mil of concentrated acetic acid. like so to both of them so again just some hot water I don't really want to put much in because as I said I read that the more concentrated let's see if it dissolves in 20 mils of water seems to. So we'll just do the other one as well. About the 20 mil mark. Now this one has the regular table salt in there. So that may take a little bit more to dissolve because it's in large chunks. Okay, after a little bit of swirling, pretty much the majority of the salt has dissolved. So I thought I'd get nice and close in to try and show you the result of what's happening here. So, the one on the right hand side here has the additional sodium chloride, and the one on the left here is just the straight solution. And so, now I'm just going to add my cobalt solutions my acidified cobalt solutions to both of my potassium nitrite solutions and we shall see what happens. Well, pretty much immediately we're getting a little bit of fizzing Okay, I just want to take a moment out there to explain something that I was doing there that I wasn't entirely happy with uh, the outcome because it sort of was a bit of a mistake on my part, which was, as you could see there in the video, that there was sort of a yellowy browny sort of fume or smoke coming off the reaction as I was doing it. And what that was, was uh, nitrogen dioxide gas, which is not a particularly pleasant gas and reasonably toxic. And I wasn't quite expecting that to happen. I mean, I had read through the theory on making this pigment, but I had overlooked the fact that that was a possibility. And the first little sample that I did um, didn't produce nitrogen dioxide, which I think or I suspect was because I had only used a very small amount of the acetic acid and in this particular samples I ran, I ran it with a higher amount of acetic acid in there. 
Anyway, that freaked me out a little bit, and lucky I was working with a very small sample size and in the fume hood, and I had some level of you know safety procedures in place. Um, but nonetheless, uh, but nonetheless, I still got you know a really small whiff of it and enough to send me uh, a little paranoid. And I think it's a good reminder to myself and to everyone else out there who ever wants to entertain doing anything like this is research thoroughly. If you're doing an experiment for the first time, make sure you work in very small sizes uh, and make sure you have a plan for if anything goes wrong. And so I just thought I'd add this little sort of friendly reminder in there and also to show you guys that like I'm not a professional chemist, so everything I'm doing I do with as much care and respect as I can for this, and I try and develop as much of an understanding of what I'm doing when I go into something, but there are still mistakes to be made, and I want to ma minimize the mistakes that I made, particularly when there's potential health risks involved. So I implore you, stay safe out there and I will do the best to stay safe myself here too and I think from here on in I'm gonna up my rigor levels with this sort of stuff even more so but we'll proceed with the rest of the video and the pigment making from here and I thought I'd just share this with you So here we are after dry after so here we are after filtering and drying the cobalt yellow and so it appears that really at the end of the day there was no appreciable difference between the two little samples that I prepared as you can see here the one on this side here on the right hand side had the addition of the sodium chloride or just the regular salt and the one over here did not and really they've come out exactly the same shade, basically the same amount, so I don't think the addition of the sodium chloride in that form seems to make any uh, noticeable difference. So if we just get a little bit of a close-up shot here of the pigment. So it's an interesting color pigment, it's sort of got a, it's sort of slightly dirty mustardy sort of element to the yellow which I'm not entirely sure if that's exactly what's desirable in the pigment it is supposed to be a replacement in some ways to Indian yellow so maybe that little bit of sort of I guess mustardy character is desirable I would have to test this in some oil or some tempera to see what it's like, but I believe that the way cobalt yellow is supposed to behave is that it's quite translucent, so it allows for a yellow that's suitable for glazing and stuff like that. Um, I'd have to... I haven't had much experience with um, cobalt yellow before, so I haven't had a chance to compare it to any other professionally produced samples. So I only have my samples here as reference and so I guess I would like to look into there is another method for producing this where instead of starting with potassium nitrite you start with sodium nitrite and that supposedly will have an effect upon what's going on but all in all I mean I'm happy that I produced such a 
I guess, a strong and different kind of yellow. It's very different to the chrome yellow that I'd produced in previous ones. It's different to cadmium yellows as well. So it's interesting nonetheless. And I'm also just fascinated by the fact that, like, cobalt can even go this direction. So if you remember, like, the last video was cobalt phosphate, which makes a violet purple color. This is cobalt nitride, and it makes a yellow color. And as in previous videos, we've done the cobalt alumina oxide, and that makes blue, and cobalt zinc oxide makes green. So cobalt, all in all, is an incredibly versatile uh, element in terms of pigment making, and I'm pretty happy with my exploration of the Cobalt series so far. Uh, if you've been enjoying this stuff, um, and you feel like supporting the channel, I do have a Patreon, so if you want to go over there and have a look, and there are some extra things that I provide, obviously, for the Patreons, and I send out little tiny pigment samples every so often, so... If that's something that interests you, please check it out. I'd be very, very grateful for any support. Otherwise, stay tuned. There's plenty more coming. And thank you for watching.